After a difficult two years, it was time for a change at Honda. A radically new bike, basically, it was out with the old and in with the new, as everything from engine to the seat unit was completely changed for 2022. Testing went well as all the riders evaluated the engine, chassis and aero package and the cherry on top was the Polar Spargo topped the Mandalika test before the season got underway. Honda's new bike looked to be a wonder under the floodlights of Qatar as Polar Spargo looked set on winning his first MotoGP race leading much of the season opener before slipping down to third. Well, Mark Marquez finished in fifth, but even still, it was a great debut for the new machine and it looked like it could give the riders the thing they had been lacking so much in 2021, confidence. But unfortunately for Honda fans, that was as good as it got, at least for the time being, as their season began to unravel. Sunday morning at Mandalika, after a weekend of struggles and grip issues, Marquez was pushing in warm-up. As he approached the fast turn 7, the 8 time champion was on a quick lap, but the grip issues that had plagued Honda all weekend came back as Mark was launched into the air at over 180 km an hour and he came down with a bang. He had suffered a concussion and was ruled out of the race, but more worryingly it was discovered that the crash had brought back double vision problems, something he suffered in training in 2021 and had made him miss the final two races. In a bid to make a recovery, Mark was made to rest and would miss the Argentina GP. The championship moved stateside to the circuit of the Americas for round four and it was announced that Mark Marquez would return as time resting and therapy had healed the double vision problems. At the circuit that no one had been able to come close to Mark in the past, the question was would Mark be able to return to winning ways? Those questions were answered as soon as the lights went out. An issue at the start meant that Mark dropped to the back of the field by the first corner and then the comeback was on. Overtaking riders like a hot knife through butter, he would eventually finish sixth after a late race battle with champion Quattararo. But there was a bitter taste as both Marquez and Honda felt the win was on the table. A run of top 10s followed including an entertaining late battle at Portima with brother Alex on the LCR Honda and just missing out on the podium after a late race save at Lorenzo Corner in Jerez. But people were still asking if Mark Marquez was back to full fitness. I will have a surgery next, uh, next week. I realised this season that uh, I'm, I'm not enjoying, I'm just uh, suffering a lot, a lot of pain, uh, I don't have power, I cannot, uh, I cannot ride like I want. We will see if we can come back soon, but no, no rush. The ghosts of Arrest 2020 were still haunting the eight-time champion, and after Mugello, all hopes were pinned on this surgery that would not only allow Mark Marquez to ride like he used to, but to also live a normal life again without pain. This was a career-defining moment and no one knew when we'd next see Mark Marquez. In his place came reliable super sub Stefan Bradl, but with Mark's absence it was left to Pola Spargaro, Alex Marquez and Taka Nakagami to pick up the mantle for Honda. Since his superb Doha podium, Pole's form took a dip, with DNFs in Argentina and Italy being particular low points and a 9th place in Portimao being his only other top 10 finish. While Alex Marquez's high point of the season came at the Portuguese GP, where he looked to be the fastest Honda for much of the weekend and only getting pipped to 6th in the line by brother Mark. While Nakagami had scored points in all but the wet Indonesian GP and Portimao, but after Mark, Nakagami was the most competitive Honda rider with three top eight finishes on the bounce at Jerez, Le Mans and Mugello. It's fair to say expectation was high on the Japanese rider to continue that form at Catalonia. A lightning start from 12th on the grid 
put him in contention into turn one, but then disaster struck. The crash showed Taka getting caught up in Bagnaya's rear wheel, reminiscent of the crash here in 2006. Thankfully, as the dust settled, the news came through that Nakagami had suffered no serious injury after an overnight stay in hospital. As the summer break came and went, things hadn't gone the way of Honda. With only two top 10s in the hands of Alex Marquez, it was a dark time for the most decorated manufacturer in MotoGP's history, and there seemed to be no light at the end of the tunnel. But as the teams got ready for the post Mizano test, there was a glimmer. Morning, Mark. Morning. Pasa. Important day today. <laughs> new, day, new, new day, new opportunity. <laughs> One hundred days since he stepped off his RC213V at Mugello and having a fourth surgery on his right arm, Mark Marquez was back. Feeling good on the bike and showing competitively on the timesheets, Mark decided it was time to return to racing next time out at Aragon. He made an impact right away, riding around the outside of the field into turn one. Then having a moment which collected Fabio Quartararo, and with a piece of Yamaha lodged in his bike, he and Takanakigami came together, throwing the Japanese rider down the road. Picking up a right hand injury in which he would require surgery on the tendon after the Japanese GP. As Mark retired from the race, it wasn't the return he had hoped for, but it was clear to see the surgery had worked and Mark Marquez was riding with his more natural style again. The strong return was confirmed at Mategi with a fourth place finish after taking a sensational pole position, his first since 2019 at the very same venue. It was a pole position that clearly meant so much to Mark as he struggled to fight back the emotions. Fifth at Thailand continued the good form, but it was Phillip Island, a track that requires so much of rider and machine, that would give us the biggest answer whether Mark was truly back. After Honda introduced a new fairing, which Mark felt was better, he used it for the race. Embroiled in a race-long battle, there were signs of the old Mark Marquez, making moves that seemed impossible to most, and at the end, scoring that long-awaited 100th Premier Class podium. The emotions ran high and the celebrations went long into the night. Honda and Marquez proved that once again they are forced to be reckoned with and that 2023 they will have to be considered as championship contenders. But as for 2022, the year didn't reach the same heights after this. Marquez crashed out of the season finale at Valencia, while Paul Spargo's Doha delight was never repeated, and his Honda swan song ended on a sombre note, a sad end to a partnership that had hoped for so much. Alex Marquez struggled all year to find the sweet spot and went on to pastures new for 2023, and despite flashes of speed, Nakagami was played with injury in the last third of the year. All culminating in Honda finishing at the bottom of the manufacturer's standings, the worst result in the four-stroke MotoGP era. However, as the curtains came down in 2022, all the focus was on next year, with Juan Mir and Alex Renz joining from Suzuki, and a brand new RC213V on the way. There could be a new dawn on the horizon for MotoGP's most celebrated factory. Hi guys, I'm Mark Marquez. Make sure like and subscribe for more.